Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me here in the storage in London where currently my area of the garage is looking rather vacant. There are only three Shmi-mobiles across my seven spaces but later today we will have a full house for the first time in a long time. Today I'm going to be heading over to Topaz Detailing to go and finally collect my 675 LT Spider. I collected it there for the first time about four years ago. As you know from the updates it's actually been away now for quite a long time as soon as I get there I am taking it for a first drive in over a year. I will explain all but I cannot wait to get back behind the wheel. Then later on we will also have the return of the G63 with Tony from Turbo Transport bringing the 4 GT back from the Nürburgring back here to London and also my Lusso is currently just out having a wash. So we've got three Shmimobiles at the moment, we will have seven later but I cannot wait to get back to the 675 LT Spider. Here at the moment then we've got the Heritage RS, the GT8, the AMG GTR Pro and a lot of empty spaces quickly gathering a lot of stuff around as well. These are all plugged into their trickles, the Lusso will be here later on, the LT will be there, the 4 GT will be here, then after the Pro we will have the G63 at the end of the line. So I need to head on out and actually need to catch a lift to get over to Topaz but when I get back there it is time to see the LT again to take it out and go drive. It is an unbelievably hot day so much so in fact I'm not sure I'm going to be able to to drive with the roof down later on if it gets any warmer but I have now arrived here at Topaz where my LT is awaiting inside the workshop. Before we go in though check out this McLaren GT. This is stunning. The spec is of course very similar to my car. It's in lantana purple, quite a similar shade of purple. Also has silver highlights although with diamond cut fascias on the wheels. You've got the silver accents around the window and it's loaded with carbon fibre. The carbon fibre front end for the splitter, the mirror caps and also if we come all the way through it has the full carbon user rear bumper sections as well. This looks awesome, absolutely love it. But let's head straight on in then and go and find out how the LT is looking and then get it out for a drive. And here it is, looking fantastic, four years now to the week after I first collected it from Topaz. That was back in the old unit, this space has been created since, but just look at it here, under the lights, it's like collecting a new car, it's been away for quite a long time, and I can't wait in a moment to get it out. Like many McLarens of this age, it's been plagued by some paintwork issues, it had oxidation to the front panels and also to the bonnet, that's been replaced now with a carbon bonnet, but having chosen to paint the car originally in a complete one-off, the MS so Orion Purple, it's been quite hard to match. That's been the main cause and source of the problems. Obviously it reached three years old, that was when it went in to have its main MOT check, its big service to go through everything to extend the warranty. It's now got to four years old, it's been a long long time that it's been away, but still looking perfect with the dark purple with the silver accents, so the pinstripes on the satin carbon around the front, the full silver wheels, I'm sure you remember how much of a big talking point those were back at the time and have been since with the SLS Black Series, but the painted silver wheels matching with the silver calipers and also with the stone grey interior. The leather of the seats and the stitching you can see around the dashboard areas and the door cards as well. But this thing, well, spider, it's a beautiful day. It is going to be a fantastic drive. And in just a moment, we're going to pull it on outside and take it on out. But this is, it's looking really, really good. The condition is, well, look at it. It's, it's like a new car. It's been kind of perfect perfected. They've gone over it with a fine tooth comb to make sure everything is absolutely in tip top shape and it is miraculous. So we'll get it started and take it out. That sounds really good. Proper cold start. So we're going to get it coming out into the sunshine. Obviously it's had all the work done for PPF to make sure all the panels have been detail protected and I guess technically now maintained as we come back on out into the glorious sunshine in just a moment where this colour is going to look magnificent. Look at that. Look at this thing. Oh, this is, it, it's honestly, this is a really, really exciting day. I am so pleased to have it back. This car has been gone for far too long. Yeah, this is cool. The first thing I need to do is to get the roof folded down. It is a beautiful day, perfect for driving a Spider open topped. Let me take a step back on board then and get it started up so I can pop the roof down. You can actually do it without starting the engine, but I think when it's been sat having PPF for a couple of days, it'd be a good idea. We've got 12 and a half thousand miles now. There will be some more to come soon. Let's start it up. And then the button here to do the roof 
folds in, I guess it's about 15 seconds or so, opens up the rear deck, and the two parts of the rooftop fold over behind, and the roof buttress closes back down. You can see those storage bags that it has underneath to use that space for storage if you keep the roof up. I'll leave the windows in place for the moment, but yes, it feels good to be back in here, back at the wheel of this car, and now ready to depart from the guys here at Topaz. Big thanks as always to them. Now though, let's go drive. The only problem right now is that it is actually far too hot to keep the roof down for any significant part of this journey. It is absolutely boiling. It's not even 11 in the morning and it is showing 28 degrees. So I need to remember how to do the lift system in this car. Uh, you press and hold, no other side, it would help if I get that right. On the center it's on the right, on the older models it's on the left. We've got a few speed bumps. I guess I haven't really driven well, I haven't driven a convertible of mine for a year because this is the only convertible in the Schmiermobiles until the collection of the GTR Roadster, which is not far off. You can keep the lift up in this car until 40 miles an hour, which is super convenient. It just feels like home already. If you take in how many miles I did between my McLaren 12C, 650S Spider, 675LT Coupe, and now the 675LT Spider, I guess the total must be 40,000 miles, maybe even more than 40,000 miles. So when it comes to supercars, this is my understanding and interpretation of a supercar. This is what feels right. This is what feels comfortable. We will head out of town, and I do think, honestly, I am going to just do the roof now because I know for the uh, main part of this, it's gonna be too much having that down. I'll put it down when we get to some nicer nicer roads, but for the motorway at 70 miles an hour, it is no fun at all, and it's so easy to just put it up and down. And everything seems to be working properly. Obviously, this is a bit of a uh, trial and error to make sure that everything is correct, because when it's been sat still for quite so long, you don't entirely know the system back down, but it seems to be all good. So let's, get, let's keep going and uh, enjoy the drive. I've been taking it easy just to make sure that everything is well and happy with the car. We're going to be heading out onto some nice roads now, so I think that means it is time for the roof down. It is also time to press active dynamics to pop it into sport and sport mode, which has obviously been quite a while. One more press for manual. Um, we've got the aero button currently engaged. I will put that down because we're not on a racetrack or anything crazy at the moment. So uh, yeah, I think that is all good. The air brake will sit down as soon as we come out uh, and start driving us to go so the speed to sit it back there we go so it's back down flat oh this is so cool i just wait for some of the cracks that are coming i'm already absolutely loving being back in this thing i mean it's it's a really significant car to me it's the oldest of the shamimobiles it's the one that i've had for the longest I've owned this car obviously for four years, and I know four years in the grand scheme of things isn't crazy, but having specced it completely from new, it was, I guess, one of only the third or fourth car I'd ever specced myself. Certainly the first car I ever chose literally my own color for. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. That is genuinely amazing. Right, country lanes. This is, it's so nimble and precise. Yes, it's rough on a road like this. Obviously bumpy tarmac and well, a very, very rigid track focused car, even if it's a convertible version. These sounds though. There we go, traction limited. That's just like in the center. You have to press ESC into dynamic mode to just loosen it up a little bit. Otherwise, basically, you do not get full power out of it. <laughs> I had missed that. That is the sound of fuel in the exhaust, the titanium exhaust, literally igniting. this car. I absolutely love it. Do you know what? It's not as crazy as the Senna. You know, it's not as fast as the Senna, but it's more usable. It's more compliant. It's more comfortable.
openly, even though I'm lucky enough to have the center in the garage, I honestly think that the 675 LT is probably the best car that McLaren have made to date. I've been, well I've driven pretty much I think the entire line, P1, Senna, 720, 620R, 600 LT, pretty much every single model and obviously I haven't driven a 675 LT at all since this car went in. Just being back in here, the feel it gives you, how it looks, the combination of factors, it's just awesome. It's just absolutely fantastic. This car overall, I, I, I don't really have many more words other than almost repeating myself. It is so, so brilliant to drive. Well, it goes without saying that I have quite missed this car. It is amazing to have it back. And I think parked with the roof down at the moment, it looks stunning in today's boiling heat. The perfect day, you could say, perhaps too hot for me, but I'm looking forward to taking this out on full adventures to sunnier climates in the very near future. In fact, I have a trip planned. It's gonna be heading around and about. Oh, nice blue, nitrous blue focus RS just went past. It's going to be heading out and about as soon as, well, subject to regulations which are all getting very confusing and complicated, but just, yeah, enjoying today an awful lot with the 675 LT. I mean, I, I just I just think the dark paint colour and the bright wheels and this car, everything about it, it's definitely a keeper in the Shamima Bills. Just being back behind the wheel is truly fantastic. I just can't get my head around how good this car is to drive. Obviously exploring some proper English countryside at the moment. <laughs> and the way the noises echo off the trees as we go through the woodland. This is, this is a lovely car for a track focused car to drive on the road. That's the, the thing with, say, the Senna is so brutal that it doesn't make sense on, on normal public roads. Whereas a spider version of the LT just snapping away. And of course I've got the sweet spot down for where you do that, for where in the rev range you can get the best noises out of it. Just slow down a little bit. <laughs> it's just a bit silly. It's all round bad. But it's so good. It's so complete. And it's a car that's still fairly usable in terms of it has a great lift system, it has a decent amount of space in it. Just down to first gear for a moment. Are we in ESC dynamic? We were, let's put it back into dynamic. Okay, foot down. It's also mental fast. Like really mental fast. But I think you do that before. That's not a that's not news today. Oh, what a delight. When you're cornering in this, it has so much grip on the trail bars, but the steering feel is magnificent. When you're driving or trying to maneuver the car, we could say, it has the turning circle of a truck, but that means when you are on the open roads, it feels brilliant. Now you might be wondering, why am I not more upset about the fact that it has literally been over a year since I've last had a drive like this in this car? Well, to be honest, I always try and look at the bright side of things. I feel very lucky to have a number of different cars to drive and experience and own, so I haven't let myself get too stressed and bogged down on it. It's been a difficult one, obviously. It's been a very complicated set of things that needed to be done, matching this paint, making sure that everything was sorted out, a few little niggles here and there, but it's gone on way longer than anybody wanted. And that's partly my fault down to the fact that back in January, I wanted to do my 10 car, 10 year anniversary uh, photo, 10,000 Instagram posts all together. So I wanted the car for that, which added a couple of months to the, the whole process. So I'm not, angry in any way at McLaren Manchester or anything like that. In fact, they've been fantastic. Before returning the car to me, completely went over the whole car. They went over everything. I know this sounds obvious, but things that you don't normally do, making sure the wheels were reconditioned, ensuring that the air conditioning was regassed, making sure that the whole thing was going to be perfect for today. You know, no errors, no warning messages, no problems given it's been sat for a very long time. And I've driven it now, what, 30 miles or so? And having an absolutely fantastic time with it. So it's a big thanks actually to McLaren Manchester. They're always fantastic and really helpful as well with any questions I've had. But it's just, like I say, it's just, it's just one of those things. It just happens. I hope it doesn't ever need any further work. At least it's now back to being perfect, which is ultimately what I want from it. Obviously it's quite windy when you're driving roof open, but then... <laughs> the smile is not gonna go away. It's a dream. This car, I can't actually believe how good it is. I'd almost be 
forgotten. It's just the right balance of modern technology to make it really fast while also being a great sound and a fantastic overall driving experience. <laughs> and some of these snaps and cracks that it makes. Oh well, yeah, a little bit bumpy here as you can probably tell. Through the trees. When you're alongside a wall, you just have to go to first gear. Uh, proper countryside. Yeah, 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 lots of yeah. To be honest, it's quite nice to have some shade under the trees. It's getting a little bit toasty today. But I am about to head back onto the motorway, back towards the storage, where the G63 and the Ford GT are ready to be brought back in as is Lusso to give us our full house. So let me just close the roof again, which is, nope, that's the wrong way. I always have a habit of pressing the button in the wrong way in this car, which is, well, slightly annoying, but it's, it is what it is. Let this happen, up to 20 miles an hour, you can do the roof in this car. These days, they tend to be 30 miles an hour, just a touch quicker, but it's not too bad. There we go, and onwards. The LT is back here in the storage, but before I go and bring in the other cars, something really stupid has happened. I have broken something on the 675 LT. Not the first time that this has ever happened, but while I was driving in the countryside, I went down a road that had a bit of a dip in it, which meant that the car scraped on the ground. Now, basically the lowest thing on this car is this. A bit of plastic that sits under the front to protect your carbon fiber splitter. I have had to replace it in the past. It's not very expensive. I think it's like 30 pounds or 40 pounds or something like that. But I heard it crack and yes, that's now hanging down, which is a bit unfortunate. I can order another one and probably fit it myself. It's just, I think, four screws. It runs from here, obviously, to the same on the other side. Nice and easy to do, but um, yes, not ideal. Little bit of broken plastic on a 675 LT Spider. Whoops. Anyway, we've got one more bit of color in here, one more splash of color so I need to go out and get now the G63 the 4GT and get the Lusso back from the car wash as well and yeah have everything lined up getting somewhere the GT is back in as well now and I've parked it in that space because being left-hand drive means it's alongside the pillar with enough space to open the door the LT is in that space being right-hand drive exactly the same and I guess that means when the Senna comes back eventually it will have to go here if I haven't by that point found the museum or the next location to keep all of the cars so onwards back out to get the next I chose the Lusso that time, so just the G63 to go and collect now, and it is starting to look a lot more colourful in here. As you guys know with the Shmi Mobiles, I'm always a big fan of strong colours. It doesn't necessarily have to be the brightest colours in the world, like lime greens and yellows, but colours that have a lot of depth and give a really good look, like the LT, the GT8, the Ford GT, for example. So, let me go get the G63, and then we will have the full house that I've been waiting for. The G63 is in, and part of a very colourful Skittles lineup at the moment, but it has been a long time since all of the spaces that I have here at the storage were occupied at the same time. Obviously, a lot of different adventures. Now, with the GT returning, I drove it out, had some fun at the Nürburgring, took it to Hockenheim for the door group day, had a lot of fun with that, but left it at Apex. Tony borrowed the G63, for now it's third errand with a trailer heading across Europe to bring the GT back home and to use that which now has 10,000 miles on the clock which is kind of cool. The GT has got about 6,000. The Pro obviously had a few epic laps at the Nürburgring and I'd love to do some more later in the year. The GT8 is well in need of a run but next up is going to be with the 675 LT Spider. I think in about a week or two depending on exact things I'm going to be taking it off on a Euro tour depending where I'm actually able to go but of course it's going to be heading back towards the Nürburgring. I think that's a bit of a given it'll be a lot of fun with this car and then onwards from there also because a few of the Shmimobiles aren't here so at the moment the SLS Black Series is at Rentec at the Nürburgring I'll collect that when I go out with the LT I don't know which I'm going to use for what, but we'll work that one out. The Senna is over in, uh, in Germany as well with Jer Collector in advance of something cool to come that's a little bit down the line, but that's going to be epic when the time comes. The M8 is actually here as well. It's at the moment with BMW to have a look into that aircon thing. We're not sure if there's anything wrong with it because it's not come back again, but just having it checked over. The Supra is currently up for sale. The Red RS is back at my flat, my home. And then what else do we have? Well, the GTR Roadster is going to be ready to be collected in the not too distant future. So things are looking bright and cheerful on the Shmimobiles front. It is fantastic, as I have said way too many times in this video, to have the 675 LT back. It was gone for far too long, 
but it is looking magnificent. It's a wonderful car. I very much enjoy it still as much as I did right back in the early days. And there are so many cool memories that I've had with this already. Remember I took it down to Croatia, to Bosnia, to Montenegro. It's been to Italy, it's been to Monaco. It's been just about everywhere. It's a special car with a big significance to me as well. And now I need to get this bit at the front sorted out which with the trickle charger plugged in. That's kind of found its way into a home just sitting there. Hopefully I won't damage that when I unplug it when I next take it out. So for today, big thanks to McLaren Manchester, big thanks to Topaz for their work to do the PPF, and of course, a big thanks to you guys for your support. I appreciate it an awful lot, but that is it for this time. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.